First, there were lie detector tests, but they weren't reliable enough to be used in court. Then there was DNA, which has proven the innocence of people wrongly accused. Well, now there is a new forensic science technology, and its creators believe it will be the next leap forward. It's called brain fingerprinting. And as Fox House Patrick McGrath reports, it may be able to prove what you know and what you don't know. Ten years ago in Edmond, Oklahoma, Melody Wirtz and her 11-month-old daughter Jessica were brutally murdered in their home. Police zeroed in on the baby's estranged father, Jimmy Ray Slaughter, who said he was at his home in Kansas with his wife and children when the killings occurred. A jury didn't believe Slaughter and he was sentenced to death. But today, Slaughter hopes to avoid execution by proving his claim of innocence using a new technology called brain fingerprinting, which measures whether a person's brain has recorded certain information. This is a test to see if, in fact, that information isn't stored in your brain. Larry Farwell, the neuroscientist who developed brain fingerprinting, brought along his own camera when he conducted a test on slaughter at his Oklahoma prison. Farwell attached a headband with sensors to measure involuntary brain activity. When we flash information about the crime on the screen, the first thing that happens is if a person has committed the crime and knows those details, they recognize it. We pick up the information with brain fingerprinting. It happens too quickly and involuntarily for a person to be able to fake the response. When the test subject sees information he has no knowledge of, his brain response signal looks much different on the monitor than it does when he has knowledge. 20 or 30 stimuli. Forensic scientist Drew Richardson, a former FBI agent, selected the probes for the slaughter test. The brain is an accurate uh, recorder of information. We don't have the ability to say why somebody knows it, or we don't have the ability to say when they obtain that information, but we do have the ability to determine whether or not somebody does have that information. Here are the things you're going to see in this block. And I want Slaughter was presented a list of questions prior to seeing a range of answers on the monitor. Some answers he would be expected to know because of information at his trial and in the media. Other details would be totally irrelevant, and some information only police and the real criminal would know. Where inside the house the infant victim was shot. The presumption is that the person who committed the murder would know where the victims were actually killed. Mr. Slaughter claimed that he did not know this information. The town where the murders occurred. That would be largely irrelevant information because everybody would know that. Of course, he would know that. We would be able to distinguish the different types of stimuli. The result of the test was good news for Jimmy Ray Slaughter. There's no recognition response. So what this tells us is that you don't know some of the most critical salient details about that crime. It means that what I've said all along is true. What would you say all along? That I was innocent. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. It's just hard to get people to believe you once somebody makes a stupid accusation. That's all it took. Mm -hmm. That's all it took. Mm -hmm. And it ruined my life and my kids' lives. Bolstered by the test results, Slaughter's lawyers have filed an appeal of his conviction to the U.S. Supreme Court. Farwell and Richardson say their tests are 99% accurate, but the technology is new and the larger scientific community has not yet weighed in. So they are careful not to make extravagant claims. There's a difference between not being knowledgeable and being innocent. Innocence is a, is a determination for a judge or jury. But Richardson and Farwell have great optimism that their company, Brain Fingerprinting Laboratories, has a bright future. What I would hope is in perhaps five years, maybe, maybe less, that every innocent person is familiar with us and he said, I, w I want a brain fingerprinting exam. I don't know the information. Don't tell me the information. I want to be tested. If brain fingerprinting does become the next big breakthrough in forensic science technology, it could also be useful in homeland security, helping law enforcement determine, for example, if someone claiming to be a student from Afghanistan actually has knowledge in his brain that only someone who had been through a terrorist training camp would know. Patrick McGrath, Fox 5 News. Incredible. If it fulfills its promises, brain fingerprinting might be more reliable than lie detector tests in the periodic renewal of security clearances. It's a way to make sure intelligence officials don't have information they shouldn't have.